This is a Samsung battery from an old smartphone, which yet has not swollen up. And I of course only say that because recently Mr. Who's the Boss released a video in which he showed that many of the batteries inside his Samsung phones have swollen up. Other creators and users also came forward to confirm this occurrence, others cannot confirm it, Samsung said they're looking into the subject and I'm just sitting here laughing about the memes while slowly realizing that I have two old Samsung smartphones sitting in a shelf waiting for their next adventure. The first one I got is a Galaxy S10e, which still works perfectly fine and as you can see it does not feature the swollen battery problem yet. The second one is a Galaxy S7, whose back cover I removed in an attempt to find out why it does not turn on anymore after I tried charging it up with a badly made mains voltage inverter. By the way, this is also the battery from the beginning. And sadly, this phone is beyond my repair capabilities because it seems like one or more tiny ICs are busted. But anyway, I still want to save my S10e from the swollen battery disaster. And my idea here is to basically get rid of the battery and modify the phone in a way that it can be powered without one. And let me stop you right there. Simply powering the phone through the USB port does not work and only locks it up in an endless boot up loop. Now I think such a power supply operated phone does not only obviously avert the battery problem, but it can still be used for various useful applications, which I will tell you about later. For now though, let's get started with the builds. This video is sponsored by Keysight and their Keysight World Innovate event. By following the link in the video description, you not only get the chance to win a mug or shirt, but you also get to enjoy awesome presentations by technology experts about subjects like 5G, 6G, quantum technology, AI and electric and autonomous vehicles. If that sounds interesting to you, then don't miss out and click the link below. To start off, I of course firstly had to remove the back cover of my phone. And for that, I powered up my hot air station in order to heat up the edge area of the cover and thus the adhesive that holds everything together. Once everything felt nice and toasty, I opened up my precision tools box to grab a suction cup, opener tools and some spatula like triangles. With the suction cup, I tried lifting the cover up while inserting an opener tool. But since that didn't really work out for me, I eventually used a flathead screwdriver. With that in place, I was able to insert the triangles and work my way around the phone's edges. But I was too impatient and thus used so much force that I broke a bit of the glass cover. Definitely not a pretty sight but it taught me that I should maybe more carefully follow an iFixit guide for such a phone repair. But luckily for me, replacement covers do exist and thus I continued this modification journey by removing all these small Phillips screws so that I can take out the upper cover, which is our coil for the wireless charging, and the lower cover. And I was pleased to find out that in this state my phone still worked fine except for the charging capability, which was paused due to low temperatures. Needless to say, the temperature was not the problem here, but instead the missing wireless charging coil, which apparently also gets used via those 7 pins to additionally measure the temperature of the phone. So after remounting it, the charging once again worked flawlessly. And this fact is definitely something that we should keep in mind for later. Moving on though, after once again removing the coil cover, I this time also unplugged the battery from the phone. To get it completely out of there though, I had to fill up a pipette with isopropanol and slowly drip that behind the battery so that the adhesive can soften a bit and I can successfully lift it all out. And I don't want to brag here, but that worked out almost perfectly in my opinion which is maybe because I tried this before with my busted phone. But anyway, like I said at the beginning, 
simply powering the phone now through USB power is not possible. Because no matter what I tried, the phone was always stuck in an endless boot up loop. No, instead we still need to power it through the battery connector. But no longer with a battery, but instead a 5V USB power supply. Which I think everyone has laying around somewhere. The only problem is that directly soldering to this connector is definitely not easy. And I would like to avoid that if possible. So instead, I removed the plastic wrapping from the original battery, got rid of another plastic enclosure and desoldered the one remaining battery tab from the PCB that comes with the desired battery connector. By the way, this board is in fact the protection circuit for the battery, which utilizes small ICs and components to basically cut off the battery power from the phone if there is an under voltage or over voltage event or if there is too much current flowing. So what I did next with it was adding a plus and minus wire to it, which I then hooked up to my lab bench power supply that was set to 4.2 volts. Since my Samsung battery works with a voltage between 4.4 volts and 3.5 volts, 4.2 lies in the middle and thus will hopefully work just fine. I mean the battery protection circuit seems to accept it because I was measuring this voltage right at the battery connector. So I plugged this protection board into the phone, hooked up my lab bench power supply and prayed for the best while holding down the power button. And eventually the phone really started up and functioned correctly while getting powered by my lab bench power supply. Awesome! But my initial excitement faded quickly once I realized that the battery level monitor on the phone still dropped over time, even though I powered the system with a constant voltage source. What I think happens with modern phones is that the phone only monitors the battery voltage at the startup and through that determines the current battery percentage stage, which then drops depending on how much current and thus power the phone requires while running. This theory got confirmed by me when I powered the phone with 3.5 volts, at which point the phone said that the battery was about to die and it then also pretty quickly turned itself off. That basically means that even though we got a constant voltage source that could theoretically power the phone forever, the phone still thinks a battery powers it and thus it will shut off eventually, which I do not want, meaning we need to do some trickery. For that, all we need is a chopped up USB cable, a chopped up USB-C cable, one mirror for 60 diode and like I said before a 5 volt power supply that can obviously output close to 5 volts and at least 2 amps, but a bit more is always better. So I sort out all the components to one another according to this simple wiring diagram in order to create this beauty. Plugged in the battery connector, reattached the wireless charging coil, plugged in the USB-C plug and ultimately powered everything. And as you can see the phone starts up just fine. And this time it will keep charging itself up so that the battery level will never drop completely. And thus it will never shut down. This works because of the Muir 460 diode, which comes with a minimal voltage drop of 0.6 volts which goes up to about 1V at a 2A current flow. Because of that, the 5V power supply voltage will get reduced to a suitable voltage within the voltage range of a real battery. And since the diode can only conduct current in one direction, there will be no charging current flowing. But it will trick the phone to mostly get powered through the USB port instead of the battery. This method should be suitable if you ask me. And if you're worried right now that the phone's USB port might activate quick charging, which utilizes 9 volts and thus could potentially destroy everything, then let me tell you that the phone would need the USB data lines to do so, which I of course cut beforehand. That means the last thing for me to do here was to create two small holes in the phone's housing to guide the wires through, make the soldering and wiring a bit more tidy, reconnect everything close everything up and finally enjoy my battery-less phone. And if you're asking yourself what to do with such a phone, 
then let me tell you that you can use it as an alarm clock, universal remotes, media player, digital photo frame or maybe a baby monitor. For me though, I really wanted to use it with the Presence app to turn it into a kind of like security camera, which as you can see makes a recording when movement is detected and then uploads the file so that I can immediately watch it from my current smartphone. With that being said, I hope I gave you some ideas what to do with your old phone so that it will not fall victim to the swollen battery problem. If you enjoyed it, then consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!